This video will describe the production of two multi-layer and faceted desk clocks. In this first desk clock, I glued up alternating uh, layers of red heart and maple wood. These are all about almost six inches square. Each layer is about a hundred thousand inch thick. And the face is a piece of three quarter inch red heart. So this will be the face of the clock. And then this will be the back and the sides of the clock. In the second clock, I'll be gluing up these alternating layers of different uh, types of wood. And once those, those are glued up, then I'll take this block of wood, and instead of cutting it this way, I'll rotate it 90 degrees and cut my circle this way. So this will be the face of the clock going forward. So two different angles to produce, to produce these two different clocks. We start the process by cutting these thin laminar boards, and these vary in thickness from uh, usually the thinnest around 25 thousandths, and most of them going up to 50, 100, 100 thousandths, and it's about a quarter inch thick for the outer layers. Here I'm slicing some 100 thousandths inch thick slices of red heart from a 6 inch square by 3 quarter inch thick board. I'm using a 1 half inch wide by 8 teeth per inch Timberwolf bandsaw blade. After each slice I rotate the indexing wheel 3 full turns. One turn for the curve of the bandsaw blade and two turns to give me my 100 thousandths inch thick slice. In the same manner I'm slicing a maple board as well as the remaining boards for this project. After we cut all our thin laminates, I then put these together in a pattern and I made a pattern that's this symmetrical. In other words, the left and right side are the same pattern going to a center. So I'm going from the center out, both directions are identical. So the next step is to glue up these thin laminates. And I made a new jig to do this. And all I did, I took a piece of um, plywood and I drilled some holes for some thin, uh, probably about 10 penny nails. And I did grind the heads off the nails. And what I'll be doing here is putting my pieces of laminate in here one at a time and then putting uh, epoxy on here, gluing this up. And the whole purpose of this jig is just to keep these things from slipping and sliding as you're gluing it so I don't have a big mess. Try to minimize the amount of waste uh, of slipping and sliding on the boards. And I do have a one final nail that I can put here on the edge to keep them sliding at the end, but this, this may be enough just doing that. So I'll glue these up. I'll probably do this in three or four sets. Uh, clamp it, put it in my, in my press for a couple hours and then uh, eventually put, uh, put the different layers together. So once again I'm using the West Epoxy system. Okay, we have six batches. I thoroughly mixed the epoxy, much longer than shown here. I do like using the brush. I'm gluing each of the thin laminate boards with the grain going in the same direction for all the laminate layers. This is because I want side grain and no end grain on the face of the finished clock. I coat both sides of each of the laminate layers to make sure I don't miss any spots with the epoxy. I continue to add the glued laminate layers to the glue up jig. Since all the laminate boards will not fit into my glue up jig, I'll be gluing the laminate layers in three separate sets. I will then glue the three sets together to finish the laminated block. When the glue up jig is filled to capacity, I insert the final nail in the glue up jig to keep all the layers properly aligned. So let me take this over in my press and I'll Put some wax paper on the top, put a block on the top, and then I'll press it to press out the excess glue. On my press, I first added a sheet of wax paper to keep the epoxy off my press base. I then added the laminates in the glue-up jig and added another piece of wax paper on top. Finally, I placed a three-quarter inch thick MDF block, the same size as the laminates, to enable me to press all the layers flat. Well, this completes the glue-up of the multi-laminate uh, clock base. And I, I did glue it in three sections, and then I just glued three sections together here. Now let me clean this up now on the, uh, probably on the, the edge sander to get rid of the glue so I can draw my circle and cut it out. So I sanded these two faces, this top face and this face, because this is the going to be the face that goes with the grain. The end grain is over here. So this is you know, side grain of the wood. So I drew my circle, so now I'll go to the bandsaw and 
cut out the outer edges. I'm going to be cutting the uh, outer corners off of this block because it's a little bit too big to uh, fit on my uh, AccuFacet jig. So just got to cut the corners off so they don't hit the uh, jig. I'm doing the band saw. This is about five inches tall, so I'm just going to cut it. I'm using a one quarter inch wide by eight teeth per inch blade to cut the blocks on the bandsaw. In the same manner I cut the second laminated block on the bandsaw. Okay, I just set up my system and I am using a, a 10 teeth per inch blade. And the first thing I did, I made sure my blade was perfectly perpendicular to my AccuSled table. And I mounted my support plate on my sled. And I'm doing an angle, I'm going to be doing 20, 40, 60, 80, and 120 degrees. So I set it to uh, 20 degrees and I mounted my pattern disc, which is a 12 position pattern disc, and I centered it on the bottom of this jig. Cutting the facet requires the AccuSlice index table, the AccuSled, and the Accute Facet accessory. And I'm going to be alternating every second step, so I'll be six facets per layer. For a more detailed description of cutting facets with the AccuFacet system, See the other YouTube videos listed in the description of this video and on our website. The AccuPath laser beam is also helpful in locating the exact position of your cuts on the bandsaw. For this first cut, I position the bandsaw blade to start its cut just before center position of the block. After the cutting position has been set, lock and tighten all the knobs and clamps on both the AccuSlice index table as well as the AccuFacet system. Everything's tight, and I said I am cutting uh, 20 degrees at this first cut. Now before I start, I gotta put my ramp on. The purpose of this ramp is just so that the uh, pieces of wood when they pop off don't jam up against the blade. So it's about an eighth of an inch away from the blade. Safety shields are both installed, and I'm all set to go. It is important to use the two safety shields on the AccuFacet system, one on each side of the bandsaw blade. Be sure to pull the AccuSled back so that both of the safety shields are in front of the bandsaw blade before making any adjustments to the workpiece. After each cut, I rotate the pattern disc by two steps to provide for six facets for each facet layer. First facet layer. At a 20 degree angle. The pattern disc permits 12 facets per revolution. To obtain 6 facets per layer, I skip one index position between each cut. For subsequent facet layers, I want to stagger the facet layers. So I first move the pattern disc by one index position and then cut every second index position. Change my angle to uh, 40 degrees. So my angle's changed to 40 degrees. I mark where I want to cut. I have to move the table in to get to that position. The cutting positions for each subsequent layer is somewhat arbitrary, but I usually set the distance to one third to one quarter the remaining diameter of the wood block. You can always cut more off later. Here you see me fine-tuning the cutting position with the AccuSlice index wheel. After the position has been set, be sure to lock all the knobs and clamps on the AccuSlice index table and the AccuFacet L-bracket support plate. Before the second layer of facets is cut, the pattern disc is rotated by one step. This will produce facets centered on the high spot or ridge of the previous layer. 
For each subsequent facet, the pattern disc is rotated by two steps between each facet. This will once again produce six facets per layer. I just rotated it to the uh, to 60 degree. I'm going to make another cut. I may move this, but for now I'll take that much off. I can always cut more off, but uh, let me try that position first. Now this next one is the 80 degree facet, which is actually the most important. That's my biggest facet. That's the facet it's going to rest on to set the clock face at 20 degrees. I'm going to try there first. For this next 100 degree facet angle, I needed to move the AccuFacet L bracket support plate to a different set of holes on the AccuSled plate. I also needed to remove the front safety shield because the laminated wood block was too large. This will require additional precaution when adjusting the AccuFacet position for each subsequent cut. Since the front safety shield has been removed, I pulled the AccuSled plate back even further before adjusting the AccuFacet pattern disc positions. It's hard to see from this angle in the video, but my hands are well behind the large safety shield and at least three inches from the bandsaw blade. For the 120 degree cut, I rotate the L bracket support and lock it in place with a brass thumb screw. So this is my 120 degree cut and I'm just squared off the edges so these faces will be all equal length. That's what I'm trying to get. So. Okay, what I was doing on the, this is my 100 degree cut, this is my 120 degree cut. What I was trying to do is get equal sides, so I have 12, 12 sides on the face of the clock here. And they're pretty close, so those two are pretty good. So now I can look and see what else I don't like. This is my 80 degree face, so that's the face that will set on the desk, so this gives me a 20 degree angle, so that's pretty good. I can always go back and take more off if I don't like the, uh, the shape of it. But uh, it's not too bad. So now we'll go and sand it. You know, one thing, I put a brand new blade on here. This is a brand new 10 teeth per inch blade. And it cut really nice. It's amazing, you know, what a new clean blade does. Uh, I don't need a whole lot of sanding on this. It's actually pretty good. So I mount my laminated block onto my AccuFacet system. And I am using the 12 position uh, pattern disc. And I'll be skipping a step at every layer. And I'll be using the uh, angles of 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120. I reinstalled the front safety shield and proceeded to cut the facets in the same manner as in the previous laminated block. Here I'm cutting the final 120 degree layer and once again I had to remove the front safety shield. But once again I pulled the AccuSled well back behind the bandsaw blade in order to keep my hands far away from the bandsaw blade when readjusting the pattern disc. This is the finished multi-laminate layered faceted wood block for the desk clock.
I made these cuts with a brand new 10 teeth per inch blade. They're not too bad. I probably could have hand sanded it, but it would take me a lot longer. This sander is definitely uh, better. But had I used maybe a, a 14 or an 18 teeth per inch blade and cut very slowly, I probably could do hand sanding on it. So it's probably something to consider for the future. It's a finer blade, but it needed to be a new blade. Once a blade gets dull, it wouldn't cut near that nice. This got cut pretty nice. So I have my jig set up here on the uh, Grizzly uh, disc sander and I'm doing my first sanding on this 20 degree point. And then the secret here is to do very short cuts. I'm going to try and minimize any burning. Short cuts, very light pressure and trying to get the same pressure on each facet so I don't get it all centered. The disc sander operates at high speed and as a result it's easy to burn the facet faces when sanding. Therefore I tried to sand on the inner portion of the sanding disc. Also when I sand the facets I use light pressure and short contact times with the sanding disc. For each facet layer I change the angle position on the L bracket support plate and carefully sand each of the facets. I next sand the second laminated facet block in the same manner using the disc sander. Now this is off the disc sander, but there's quite a few bird marks that need cleaned up. So I'm going to take off my pattern disc first. And we'll start hand sanding trying to get rid of these bird marks. I think to start with 220, I think will be enough. I'm using the sanding blocks described in our previous video. I'm using care not to round the corners of the facets. I'm starting with 220 grit sandpaper until all the burn marks from the disc sander have been removed. I then finish sanding with 320 grit sandpaper. Both of the faceted blocks are sanded in the same manner. For a final finish sanding of the facets I use a 320 grit sanding mop. Again I try to sand on the faces of the facets so as not to round the facet corners. And here is the finished sanded block, ready for finishing. To drill the cavities for the clock mechanisms, I once again used the drilling jig described in one of our previous videos. I used a Forstner drill bit to drill the cavity hole to fit the clock mechanism. Both faceted blocks were drilled in the same manner but with two different size drill bits, since the clock mechanisms are different for both of these desk clocks. The drilled facet block is removed from the drilling jig and ready for finishing. And here is the second faceted desk clock block after drilling the cavity for the clock mechanism. I have my two clocks ready to finish. This is my first clock, which is alternating layers of red heart and maple. And again, 12 facets per layer. And just a solid red heart front, which is really some really nice piece of wood there. Uh, the second one is alternating multi-layered woods, all different varieties of woods. But these need to be finished now. Uh, they're done sanding. So I'll be giving these a coat of bush oil and then several coats of polyurethane. And these are all set to uh, give a couple coats of bush oil. What I normally do is I put uh, use at least two coats of bush oil out at least 24 hours between drying time. So I'll give these uh, you know, a coat of bush oil, let it dry overnight, give it a second coat, let it dry a second night, and then put uh, probably 10 coats of polyurethane on. And these are all sanded down to 320 grit sandpaper. These are just some standoffs, so after I coat them, they have a place to dry. And I usually use a lint-free cloth.
to apply my brush oil and my polyurethane also. I like bush oil for two reasons. Number one, it seals the wood, but it also darkens the wood a little bit. And I like darker woods. Just my per personal preference. So you can see what that does. So let those dry for about an hour, I'll wipe, them, I'll wipe them dry with a clean linen cloth and then let them dry overnight and give them a second coat tomorrow. This completes the construction of these two multi-layered faceted dust clocks. And after uh, they were made on the AccuSlice and AccuFacet system, they were given uh, two coats of bush oil followed by 12 coats of polyurethane. And now we're ready to insert the clock inserts to finish these clocks. And these inserts just have a, a rubber or a plastic ring that holds it in place as you slide it in. And just rotate it to the correct position. And likewise on the other one, again, it just slides into the cavity you created. And that completes these two multi-layer faceted dust clocks. Let me go ahead and put these on a rotary table and I'll show you how it looks like on all sides as it's rotating. This completes this video on the production of these two laminated and faceted wood desk clocks. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to call us or visit our website. There are several other videos describing the fastening operations on YouTube and also on the AccuSlice website. And once again, thank you for watching this video.